the Anno series is almost 20 years old. And in all that time it hasn't really managed to gain the same amount of recognition as some of the other representatives of the city builder genre. It's not as widespread as Zeus or Pharaoh or Caesar, not as much as SimCity, not as much as even The Settlers. And it's not really hard to understand why, it sort of didn't really take off in the US, did it? The first game in the series, Anno 1602, was released in the year 1998 in Europe, but it only got to the US in the year 2000 and as you know you sort of need a big audience if you really want a series to flourish. The first couple of games were made by a studio called Max Design, known for making some Amiga games back in the day as well as a bunch of business simulators and it was published by Sunflower Interactive. The first one was competent enough, but it took five years for it to get a sequel. Five entire years. And so we got Anno 1503 establishing a tradition that all the numbers of the year the game takes place in will add up to 9 and all the games are 99 years apart because it was followed by Anno 1701. Sure, um, then it went to 2070 and that sort of broke the mold and then to 2205 which was again wrong but at least it's going back to the year 1800 this year, close to its 20th anniversary. Oh yeah, and there was one more title, which is the subject of today's show, and it is a request from one of our patrons on Patreon, and that is Anno 1404. Before the game came out, there was a bit of a hubbub about it, because this wasn't a Sunflower game anymore. It wasn't published by Sunflower Interactive, there was no more Sunflower Interactive. It was a Ubisoft game. It was still made by Related Design, the studio that handled the previous title in the series, but it was also being supervised by Blue Byte, and the two companies eventually would merge into just Ubisoft Blue Byte. You know the story, when a big publisher takes over a smaller developer with niche series it's known for, the result can be... Well, you know what Electronic Arts does all the time, so I don't think it's, it's worth giving exact examples out of fear that they will bring back bad memories of, well, everything is done. So in 2009, when 1404 was released, there was a bit of apprehension, especially because they, they rebranded it. We knew it as Anno 1404, but in the US it was released as Dawn of Discovery. No mention of the Anno series. That caused a bit of concern then, but in high hindsight, it's really not that bad of an idea. The Anno series was non-existent in terms of presence in the US. Ubisoft knew that. And since this was the earliest game in terms of year in the series, they just gave it its own name and hoped that it would catch on. And thankfully it did, because Anno 1404 is a really good city building game. The Anno series has a couple of differences compared to what you usually see on this channel in in terms of city builders. You know, your Caesars, your Pharaohs, that sort of stuff. It's not about you building a city, a single one. One where you have all the land you need or you have to restrain yourself to a certain portion of the map and use the resources as best possible and that's it. No, no, no. Anno is based on the idea of discovery. That, that's why they give it a name, Dawn of Discovery. In this case, you start off in a port, what a ship, and you go about exploring the seas and you will eventually find an island several islands. You explore them a bit, you look around, see what resources are there, and then decide if you want to set up shop here. You take into account things like the size of the island, how much you can expand, what can you collect from it, how close is it to other islands, to other ports, and a very important aspect, is somebody already there? Unlike other city builders, in Anno, well, I, I think you can disable the EA, but usually in Anno you are not alone. There is both the neutral faction that sent you, with which you can trade, and also AI controlled explorers just like you who are doing their own thing. They're setting up their own cities and they're fighting for the same resources as you are. Because of this, it has a different feel than other city builder games. There is a bit of a sense of urgency in your actions. Because if you do not use your time wisely and try to get to the islands with better resources and time, you'll find that the enemy, well, it doesn't even need to be the enemy, it's just competition. You don't have to be at war with each other, that they have, you'll find that they have taken over the island. But if you don't like that, yeah, you can absolutely go to war. While combat in games like Settlers and all the Impression Games titles 
felt like a bit of an afterthought and I know it was a bit more central to the way the game worked to the point where you have multiple types of units and ship to ship combat and that only improved with time so by the time you got to the fourth game in the series which is this one Anno 1404 you had a combat system with controllable units that was very functional it was still not what you would call a combat game this wasn't going to turn into Age of Empires but it was a couple of noticeable notches above other representatives of the genre. Though again, at its core, it wasn't about the combat. It was about setting up production chains. But until we got, I would say, games that were a bit more puzzle-like in their nature in terms of uh, the building chains, like Big Pharma or I think Factorio would count here too, Anna was, the entire series was the staple for thing to play if you want production chains. If you thought Settlers 2 was complicated, Anno just blew it out of the water. And since this was the fourth game in the series, the amount of resources you could gather was extremely high. The amount of things you could make from those resources was again really high. And then you could take those and turn them into something else or just trade them off or, you know, build an army and conquer everything. It also has a different way of functioning compared to settlers. Because although it uses roads and you absolutely need roads to get people to go to the different buildings and collect stuff, much probably yeah, that's more of a Zeus, Pharaoh type of affair. You don't actually need roads everywhere because somehow uh, if something is in one market, it's simultaneously in every market on that island. They have teleporter technology, is what I'm saying. And it's honestly a concession that I'm kind of okay with because it does allow you to build very, very vitally packed and very focused production chains for individual materials and goods. If you're wondering, oh, do you have any examples of that? D don't look don't look at a footage in the background. I've seen what people build like in this game. What I did there in the background is more me trying to remember how exactly all this stuff worked based on what I played about uh, nine years ago. Also, it's the demo version because I could have sworn I had it, and I think I did, but on the account of the place I used to work at back then. Either that or they sent me a review disc. Ubisoft used to send us review discs back then. I even still have the one for Tom Clancy's End War. Remember the Tom Clancy RTS? Or I think it was an RTT actually because you didn't build units, you just started with them. The idea is that it was voice controlled by parrots in a commercial. That's not important though. Anno 1404 did come with a nifty collector's edition that had a bunch of date seeds in a bag. A velvet-ish... Oh no, it was a leather bag with date seeds in it. If you want to plant a tree. But uh, turns out, isn't that great in cold climates? And if you're wondering why it had dates in it, well, there's a reason for that. The game took place in the age of the Renaissance, or close to it, and the core idea was that you would be discovering knowledge that other people have, namely the people of the Middle East, the Near East. Technically it was just Northern Europe back then, so it was the South basically, the people of the South. So the game's map was split up into two parts. In the North you would find more European temperate type of terrain, where exactly we have in Europe that many islands islands on a sea, I don't know, but so it, it's an abstraction, it's an idea. And in the south you would find more arid climate, you would find deserts, you would find a different ecosystem that required different ways of building and different ways of life. You couldn't put the same buildings you had there, well, you could put some of them, but they wouldn't fundamentally work. I mean, a house made for European climate would uh, kill the inhabitants uh, of a more tropical environment, of a more arid desert-like environment and the people you know in Europe they uh, didn't really adjust well to that temperature so you had to convince the locals to come join your city but before any of that could happen you first had to convince the Grand Vizier of the Sultan that you are friendly and he did that by trading with them by giving them a letter of introduction from uh, one of your nobles because again you had neutral factions uh, that you could trade with and they could even give you quests I think that was a feature in some of the previous games as well but I only played the first one and this one so there's a bit of a knowledge gap there for me and once you got into the good graces of the Grand Vizier he would share with you technology how you could live in the desert how you could turn it green again and fulfill the dream of Liette. No Sheikh 
Hulud though. And this change of having two different climates turned what was at this point an already complicated series into one that was even more complex. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. City builders tend to have a problem, especially when you're in the free build type of scenario. They quite quickly become a known problem, a solvable issue, something for which there is a solution that will always work. And that's why they get boring after a while. Unless you keep pumping in individually crafted scenarios like a really long campaign which is what uh, what the Caesar and Pharaoh and the Emperor games are based on. Here however you could do a lot with just the sandbox mode because although you did have known problems that had known solutions like how to build a perfect production chain for a certain type of good or how to build the ideal city block with the maximum possible amount of people smooshed into one place, there were three things that always threw a monkey in your wrench. No, that's not how the scene goes. You get the idea. The first one was the AI controlled opponent or possibly more of them if I'm not mistaken. If you're just starting out, the AI knows how to play the game better than you. It'll constantly keep you on your toes. Number two is the fact that no island is where you will live and die. You will spread around because you will need more resources and you'll have to create production chains between different islands, trading resources between your own colonies and also making voyages back to the neutral factions or to another faction to sell off your stuff because if you don't have functional trade you will lose. Yeah, you can set your ports to auto sell some stuff but uh, the um, ships from the neutral factions will come not that often you have to set up trade routes yourself and the game does have a great system that lets you plan them out it will even tell you what their efficiency is and if you don't do that then well uh, you're gonna have a lot of unhappy citizens because unless you tax them to hell and back you're not gonna have a lot of money soon and you will go bankrupt but if you do tax them to hell and back they uh they may start burning down buildings. Also, if they don't have enough food, they may do that. They tend to get a bit disgruntled easily and turn violent. It is, after all, humanity 600 years ago. That's even before Vlad the Impaler, in case you're wondering. So that's two things. AI and no island being necessarily the end-all be-all. And the third one was the Desert Islands. They had different gameplay. Well, not different, different gameplay, but what you knew in the previous islands where you would start the game is not valid there. You have basically two games in one and the expansion I believe added volcanic islands though I'm not sure how they work or if they're any different from the rest of them but it, it did add spies as well. The Venice expansion which came out a year later added the ability to hire spies and to outright buy influence over an opponent's island and just kick them out without any violence. But again if you wanted violence and you were ready to build the necessary production chain for it, yeah, sure, go for it. You had war as an option. But for me, this game, as well as most city builders, didn't be about the building, about seeing your little oh. island grow from something resembling Tropico to a true metropolis of the Renaissance with grand cathedrals, no, which no, you no, can't no, get to in the demo because the demo is limited to just one hour. Also, the demo has the, the Tages DRM. I'm sorry, computer, for subjecting you to Tages. For those don't know, um, Tages is one of the forms of the RM that was uh, kind of dreadful back in the day. It and Star Force and Secure ROM. Most of them don't even work on Windows 10 because they're a security hazard. You know, the, the digital rights management thing meant to protect the software from pirates is in itself a security risk. Kind of makes you wonder, but the GOG version probably doesn't have it. Actually, I don't think even the Gamer's Gate version has it. I think they removed Tages from it completely in all of the editions of the game, hopefully. I mean, the GOG one probably does. That's the whole shtick of it. If there is one thing I wish the game would have had is a better zoom in option, so can zoom in even closer and see the people better. You'll spend most of your time completely zoomed out and just seeing the ensemble, not even noticing the cards as they gather resources from the buildings or don't and leave you wondering I put you right next to that building why haven't you collected the stuff yet I need it to make stuff other stuff to make money because we're going bankrupt because I built really fancy roads and I had no idea it was so expensive but you could
could also upgrade roads and it would make people go faster. It would have also been nice to be able to click on the individual inhabitants and see what they're thinking. After all, they're not just for aesthetic purposes, they will set your stuff on fire and come out with pitchforks and plaques and generally screaming at you if you uh, if you do things like tell them to come to your city and then don't give them food. And besides the sandbox mode that can generate more than one uh, type of island configuration than the demo does, you also have a campaign, well I think you have two campaigns with the expansion as well, which should really keep you busy for quite a while. I had forgotten how enjoyable the game can be. Yeah, it does put a bit more stress on you because of the time factor involved, you, you can't really make it go permanently on a slower speed, you can just momentarily make it go slower I think, or maybe I pressed the button wrong I guess, who knows. But that's part of what makes it not as stale as time goes on. You can always come back to it and find new challenges. And the new one will be out soon and it will tackle the industrial age at its beginning. But if you're interested in the renaissance then you can find Anno 1404 Gold Edition on GOG right now for a little over 12 euros, which is not all that expensive and the demo itself, if you don't mind the DRM, is free to download and you can play it for up to an hour on each session and there's no save feature. But you'll get a very good feel of the game and you'll want more. And if you want to know more about the series before playing it or just want to learn more about it, our friend Steven Nonsense will have a video of his own on his channel C Nonsense about one of the previous chapters of this series. So check that out when it's up. You'll find the link to his channel in the description. Goodbye.